Hi everybody, it's Nicole, and I am here today to discuss the difference between decimal and binary numbers, and then we're also going to talk about how to convert from one to the other. So we're going to go from decimal numbers to binary, uh, and then from binary back to decimal. So um, it should be a fun time tonight. So, <laughs> uh, so if you're new to this, if you're new to convert converting things manually without a calculator, um, you're in the right spot. So, so let's go ahead and get started. So. The first thing I want to talk to you about today is decimal numbers. So what is a decimal number? So it's something that we take for granted. Like we talk about decimal numbers every day in our day-to-day -day lives for money systems. Um, but what exactly is a decimal number? Uh, so it's you'll hear people say decimal base 10. And what they're referring to is the fact that each digit of a decimal number uh, can represent the values 0 through 9. So since there's 10 possible values, uh, we call it base 10, also known as radix, uh, R-A-D-I-X. In fact. I'll put that up here so you guys uh, have it. So, uh, so radix. So, let's see, radix. You might hear it called this radix, just like that. That's like the other term, radix. I, radix. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm, I might be pronouncing that wrong. But um, so, so either way, it's a base ten system. Uh, uh, th now, the, then we have a position. So the positional value. So, um, we're going to look at this here in a minute. But if we look at the, for an example, three nine zero. I'll just put these up here. Like something like this, right? Um, if I was look at these numbers, each of these is the digit, uh, and these are the positions. So this is the hundreds position. So in a decimal ten number, hundreds. I'll see if I can write this up here. Here we have tens and ones, right? So, but where does this actually come from? I, I like, and this is something that we really don't think about very much. Like, where does this actually come from? Well, it comes from the fact that if we look at, um, I'm just going to do it this way. So let's let's just clear that for a sec. If we look at this this number, three nine zero. So I'm going to write it up here a little bit bigger. So we're going to say three. Uh, I'll put nine over here, and this is zero. Um, what we actually have here is something like this. So now I'm going to start on the on the rightmost position. So we always read from left to right because we would say three hundred ninety, right? So we always read from left to right. Um, this position over here, this digit over here, is actually worth, so we're going to say base 10 to the power of 0. Uh, and anyway, it's that uh, is familiar with exponents, knows that anything to an exponent of 0 is 1. So this gives us a value of 1. Uh, in, this, in this position, uh, we have base 10 to the power of 1 right here, which gives us 10. So you, can, you guys can see where we're going with this, right? Uh, then we have 10 to the power of 2 over here, which gives us 100. So essentially, in a base 10 system, easy way to remember is the exponent uh, is the number 0. So in this case, you have an exponent of 2, so that gives us two zeros. Here we have 1, we have 1, 0. Uh, here we have no zeros, right? So that, that's the easiest way to think of this. So now, now, this is where the magic comes in, right? So then what we do is we take the 100, and we're going to multiply it by the actual digit. So in this case, 100 times 3 gives us our value, I'll say V for value, <laughs> uh, which is 300, so we're going to say 300, so this is worth 300, that, that. Uh, over here uh, we have 10, so we're going to say 10 times 9, and our value becomes 90, just like that right there, and then finally we have um, 1 times 0, and anything times 0 is going to be 0. So now what do we do? So we add these together. We just sum all these together, just like this, which gives us our 390. 390. And we're going we're gonna to write this as uh, in subscript uh, format. which is So there's two formats we can write a decimal number in. We could say 390 and then base 10. And this is called subscript format. So subscript, subscript like this. And the other way to do it is, I don't know if this was th that common, but you could do what's called programming literal prefix. And it's going to look something like this, like 0, D for decimal, uh, and then the number 3, 9, 0. So, um, yeah, I prefer this way uh, myself. I, I like, But it's very important that we actually put the prefix because uh, if we just put the numbers 3, 9, 0, we don't really know what we're talking about. It could be hex, it could be... Um, you know, that uh, could be binary code or decimal for all we know. So we don't know. So it's very important. If there's anything to take away from today, from what we're talking about here, it's that whenever you're annotating something, it's very important that you actually 
um, properly annotate your digits. Um, if we usually generally, um, if if I don't see a subscript or any type of prefix, I assume decimal. Um, and there are some things in some of the other tutorials that I'm going to go through with you guys that you can look for to, to kind of rule out what system you have. So just know that you, there are ways to tell it apart. So that is decimal. All right. So <laughs> on to binary. So all right. So now we're going to talk about binary. So a binary number um, is a value. It's a number that only has two possibilities, which is why it's called binary, right? So uh, it could be a one or a zero or true and false. Yes, no. Think of it like yes and no, right? So it is these one of the simplest um, number systems that currently that we know about, right? So currently. Um, and in fact, I, I often joke, I usually say that computers are, you know, we always say computers are smart with smartphones, but uh, in reality, they're not that smart. Uh, they only know ones and zeros, right? So that's, that's it. Um, now, there is one really important thing that we have to talk about with binary numbers, and that is um, the ordering of the binary numbers uh, matters, right? So we have what's called most to least and least to most format. Now, some of the other tutorials I'm going to go through a little bit later on, uh, we'll go deeper into this, but basically what we mean is if we were to look at our, it's basically a scale. So if we were to look at a, a binary number, um, we have our least infinite bit side and our most infinite bit side. It's it's the the scale the, the scale uh, like like the low to the high or the high to the low essentially, if you will. So in fact, let's let's go through an example. So what we're going to do here is we're going to we're going to jump into the next. Uh, we're going to do a conversion here. So what we're going to do is we're going to just to show this in action. So we we know that in a binary number, it's a number that consists of two possible states, a one and a zero. So all, uh, Bunch of ones and zeros, essentially, right? Ons and offs. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to say over here, for this example, I'm going to say this is the least state of input side over here. Uh, let me just turn this on over here. Uh, there we go. Okay. So we're going to say that this over here is the least significant bit side. So LSB is what we're going to call this over here. Uh, and then over on the left, we're going to call this the most significant bit side. Now, why is that? Uh, well, the reason for it is because, now again, because this is a binary system, um, our base is 2, so the base is going to be 2 in this binary system. And just like we did with decimal numbers, we're going to start with power of 0. So in this case, 2 to the power of 0 to the exponent of 0. Uh, for those of you who remember from the last example, that's going to give us 1. So we got 1 right there. 2 to the power of 1 is going to give us 2. So we got 2 over here. 2 to the power of 2 is going to give us 4. 2 to the power of 3 gives us 8. You can see where we're going with this, right? 2 to the power of 4 gives us 16. 2 to the power of 5 gives us 32. 2 to the power of 6 gives us 64. I think I, I, I don't have enough blocks, guys. I'll make this work. 2 to the power of 7 is 128. And I'm going to need to make one more um, column over here. So I'm just going to draw this over here like this. Oops. Okay, that's, that's pretty bad. That's <laughs> a little bit better. Okay, you guys get the idea. <laughs> Let's see if we can draw this out. Just like that. Sorry, guys. I totally ran out of spot. All right, so the next one's going to be 2 to the 8th power, which is 256. Now, why do I stop there? Well, I stopped there because the next number up over here would be 2 to the 9th power, which actually be 512, which is bigger than our original number. So this is our original number over here, this 392. So every time I'm writing this number down here, I'm asking myself, can that number fit into the decimal number that I want to convert to binary? So 256 does fit into 392, but 512 wouldn't anyway. So anything beyond this value here is just going to be zeros on the most of the bit side. So now, now, now you can kind of see where this most of the bit, least of the bit comes from because the scale, um, this is the least of the bit side of the scale, and this is the most of the bit side of the scale. So if this was, so in this case, we, we call this most to least because we read it from left to right, most to least. If we were to say that this was least to most, the scale would be reversed. Oops. So the, rip, the scale will be completely reversed. So if this was 1 here, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, um, then we'd say that that's least to most. And 
changing the order matters because if we change the order, um, we get a totally different value. So it's very, very important that we get this right. Now for this case, we're gonna leave this in most to least uh, format, okay? So, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start on the most benefit side over here, and I'm gonna ask myself, can this number fit into uh, 392? And if it can, um, we're gonna put, uh, let's see here, so what we'll do is, I'm gonna change the color here so we can see this a little better. So I can, I say, okay, 256 does fit into 392, so I'm gonna say a one here, and then I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna do a little bit of math here, public math. So we're gonna take 392, which is our starting value, and then we're gonna subtract uh, 256 from that number, just like this. And that is going to give us, uh, it's going to give us 6, uh, 3, 136. All right, so 136. So I've got 136, that's my new number, right? That's my new number. Now I'm going to move to the right, I'm going to say, can 128 fit into 136? Uh, so, and it can, right? So if it can, I'm going to put a 1 here. So in this case, I'm going to put a 1 here. And now I'm going to subtract 128 from this number. Just like this. 16, let's see, that's gonna give us eight. It is late in the day, guys. Uh, I've been working today, so <laughs> I'm a little tired. All right, so uh, next number, 64. Can 64 go into eight? That's our leftover value. The answer is no, it cannot. It's way too big, so we're gonna put a zero here. 32 also cannot go into eight, so we're gonna zero this number out here. 16 is too big. And eight does go into itself, so we're gonna put a one here. I subtract eight from itself, and I am left with zero. And then the rest of these are just gonna be zero because four cannot go into zero, two cannot go into zero, and one cannot go into zero. So we are left with our binary number. So this, so what we would do is we would write this like this. We would either say one one zero 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 one triple zero with a subscript of two, which is the way, that's the way I like to do it. Or you could also do it like this, and you'll see this in calculators. You'll see a zero, a B, like this, and you'll see the number. So one, one, triple zero, uh, one, zero, 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 something like that. So uh, either one, very important that you do this, um, especially when dealing with small binary numbers. The smaller the number, like if you had a binary number of like one, zero, one, uh, and you didn't put the prefix, that could be 101 for all we know. It could be 101 in hex, it could be... So, so this is where things get tricky. So always important to actually annotate. And another thing I usually tell people, I usually tell my students this all the time, is try to make sure that the, the, the subscript, if you're gonna use that format, that you don't write this number too big. Like, like sometimes it can get a little bit, it can start to look like the actual, like, like an actual decimal number. So I usually try to write it a little bit smaller. Um, I'm doing the best I can with this little stylus that I have here, um, which is why it looks like this. So. All right, so that's one way to do it. All right, so that is what we call the subtraction method that, that we just did there. So that is the subtraction method. But now what now what, what other ways do we have to do this kind of stuff? Well, let's look at another way. So another way to do this is we can actually use uh, the division method. And some people actually like this. So this would be if we're going to do, so in this case, we're going to do decimal, decimal number, Uh, to binary, so we're going decimal to binary. Very important to know that, right? And then this is what we call the division method. All right, now prepare yourself because it's not bad. I, some people really like this method. Some people, it's a love-hate relationship with it. <laughs> so we're going to use the same exact number, and we're going to prove that we got it right. So what I'm going to do is I'm start my number. So three nine two is what we just did. Base 10, that's what we had before. So I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start over here because um, there's gonna be a lot of math involved here. So 392, and we're gonna divide this by two because we're going to binary. So because we're going to binary, we divide by two. And there's an easy trick here, and that is if you're starting with an even number, you're gonna have a remainder of zero. If it's an odd number that you're starting with, you're gonna have a remainder of one. So this is very easy. So 392, so 392 divided by, so we'll divide that by two. And that's going to give us one. Now, this does get easier as you go. So, so we got uh, 19. Uh, 9 times 2 is 18. 12. 6. 6 times 2 is 12. Subtract the difference, and we get 0. So there's our remainder. So we get 
196 with a remainder of 0. Just like that right there. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, just to give myself a little bit of room here, I'm going to erase this. Just like that. And we're going to bring the 196 over. So I'm going to say 196 divide this by 2. We're going to do the same thing. And now, again, this gets easier as you go. So uh, 196 divided by 2 gives us uh, 9 times 2 is 18. Take the difference. Uh, 6, bring the 6 down. That gives us 8. 8 times 2 is 16. So in this case, we get a remainder of 0. So we get 98 with a remainder of 0. Not too bad, right? All right, let's see here. Bring the 98 over. So 98, we're going to divide this by 2. So 98 divided by 2 gives us 4 times 2 is 8. Take the difference. That gives us 18. 9. 9 times 2 is 18. Subtract the difference. Gives us 0. So in this case, we get 49 with a remainder of 0. So we get our first odd number. So you can see, whenever you're starting with an even number, we get a remainder of 0. So now we'll do 49. Divide that by 2. I know I'm going to have a remainder of 1. So 49. Divide that by 2. 2 times 2 is 4. Bring the 9 down. We get 4 times 2 is 8. We get a remainder of 1. So we get, in this case, 24 with a remainder of 1. 24 divided by 2. That's the easy one, right? Equals, I won't even do this one. So 12, a remainder of 0. I don't care how tired I am, guys. I know that one. <laughs> All right, so let's get rid of that there. 12 divided by 2. And I'm still going to write this up so I don't lose track of where I'm at. So 12 divided by 2 equals 6. And because it's an even number, we get a remainder of 0. 6 divided by 2 equals 3. Divides evenly, so we got a remainder of 0. Um, 3 divided by 2 equals 1 with a remainder of 1. And then the last one is going to be 1 divided by 2. And that can't do that. So 2 doesn't go into 1, so we're going to put a 0 here. And we have a remainder of 1. And then what we're going to do is we're going to read this from the bottom up. So what I do is I read this from from the bottom up. Let me see if I can draw this arrow here. Okay, it's not the best arrow. Oh, let me, all right, you guys get the idea. All right, let's try this again. I'm, I'm OCD, guys. I'm OCD. So we are going to read this that way, bottom up. <laughs> so this number becomes one one zero 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 one zero 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 sub 2, just like that. So that's our number. And that is what we just got. Now, if we want to check this guy, this is what I love about this kind of stuff. We can easily check this. So how do we do that? So if I want to check my work, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this value. I'm going to rewrite it. So I'm going to say 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, triple 0. I'll try to give myself a little bit of room. There's our number right there. I'll put the base 2 there so I don't forget. Uh, I'm gonna remember, this is my least inner bit side over here, and this is my most inner bit side over on this side. So this is going to be 1, 2, and basically this scale um, is easy to remember, it just doubles. That's the easiest way to remember this. 16, 32, remember this is the scale we wrote before. 64, 128, and then 256. Now, this is where the magic comes in. So the way this works is any of the values that have a 1 underneath them, we add. <laughs> uh, so, and, and you can think of it just like we saw before. So if we have our, our values, um, so if this is just like we did before, anything with 0 in it is going to give us 0. So the, so the easiest way to remember this when you're adding this up to check your number, just add the ones that have 1 underneath them. So in this case, I'm going to add 256 plus the 128. And plus 
the 8. Uh, and when we do that, we should get the same thing as we start with. So in this case, we get uh, 16, 22. So we get 22 there. Bring the 2 over. That gives us 9 and 3. So there's our 3, 9, 2. Like magic! <laughs> so how cool is that? So that is the basics of conversion. So the one takeaway from all this, this whole tutorial that what we just did here, is the whenever you're doing conversions, it doesn't matter if it's if you're going from decimal to hex, decimal to octal, which we're gonna cover that later. Um, no matter what the format is, the easiest way to do it is take it take it down to binary because you can convert anything from binary. Binary is the simplest form. So um, I hope you guys learned a lot. Um, so that's our basic tutorial today. Um, practice. It's all about the practice. Um, that is what I will say. So in order to really get good at this, um, and is, you just have to keep doing it. So um, highly suggest get as much practice as you can, um, and I'll see you on the next tutorial.